Galnet News, your galaxy in focus. 6th of April, 3301. In today's news, an Imperial assassination attempt is foiled. Princess Orissa confirms her speech was aimed at unknown Imperial assassins. Palace medical staff held for questioning. Mercs of Mikun in station construction bid. The East India Company put hit on their own pilot for charity. 78 Ursae Majoris votes to join the Alliance. Sanchilan unrest turns to bloodshed. And Odyssey Expeditions unveil a new spokesperson. Our top story today. According to sources within the Imperial Palace on Capitol, an attempt to end the Emperor's life was foiled last week. The close call came after a member of the palace's janitorial team alerted the Emperor's personal physician to the fact that the palace pharmacy had been left unlocked. This caused medical staff to carry out a full inventory of the Emperor's medical supplies, which in turn revealed evidence that some of the Emperor's medication had been tampered with. Details as to the exact nature of the attack have not been shared with the press at this time. However, Chancellor Blaine's office has confirmed that had the attack gone undetected for much longer, the Emperor would almost certainly have been killed. The investigation into the matter is an ongoing concern. Citizens who think they might have information pertinent to the case should contact Capital Security as soon as possible. And in related news, since Princess Orissa's impassioned speech on the steps of the Imperial Palace, citizens the length and breadth of the Empire have been speculating as to which group, or groups, prompted the Princess to take such a public stand against them. Despite rumours suggesting that the speech was intended as a warning to Senators Torval and Petraeus, both of whom have flouted Imperial law on multiple occasions, Galnet can now exclusively reveal that the Princess was in fact talking about the unknown assailant responsible for the attack on the Emperor. In a further statement released to Galnet this morning, the Princess had this to say, I will not sit idly by while unseen assailants strike at the very heart of our nation. The time for action is now, and I call on all loyal Imperial citizens to join me in my mission to purge the Empire of all those who wish to see it harmed. For the next seven days, my agents on Simpson Depot in Faisi will be empowering citizens to act on my behalf in the fight against Imperial corruption. I urge all loyal residents of the Empire to join me in hunting down the fiends who attacked our father at his weakest. Your compliance will be rewarded. Following on from tests conducted on the Emperor's medicine in the light of the assassination attempt, reports suggest that the medicine testing positive for contamination was not a full batch, and some of this batch had already been given to the Emperor. It is not known whether the batch was tainted on the night of its discovery, or tainted previously and only later discovered, but the entire palace medical staff has been held for questioning. In a surprise announcement, the Mercs of Mikun, in partnership with the Dukes of Mikun, have announced their intention to construct a new station and colonize a new system, and are appealing for help from motivated pilots in acquiring the materials necessary for this huge task. The system, believed to be the target for the new station, has the catchy name of Col 285 Sector UGI B246, and pilots have begun to assemble at Herishoff Gateway in the Kwati system. The Mercs of Makun are a mercenary organisation based in the Makun system, and were formed to help the Dukes of Makun, who were exiled from the Empire many years ago, to regain a foothold on the political map in a bid to gain control of the neighbouring HR7327, a goal they still have not reached, despite having a majority influence. Reports also suggest that a group known as the Dark Armada have been making efforts to hinder the construction plans attacking ships carrying vital materials before they can deliver them, and pilots heading for Kwati in an attempt to turn profit on the station construction plans are warned that this does not come without its own dangers. In a move sure to perplex many, the East India Company today announced that they have put a hit out on one of their own pilots, a Commander Echo. The rogue pilot was believed to be carrying a secret recipe for crab patties, belonging to East India CEO Commander Krabs, and was accompanied by Commander Liquid Catnip. This story appears to date back to the 1st of April this year, 
when Commander Krabs took Commanders Echo and Catnip away from their regular duties and forced them to prepare a large quantity of crab patties, at which point they went rogue with the recipe. Commander Krabs, who was understood to be furious at this apparent theft, issued a kill order on Commander Echo, offering a large charitable donation on the successful destruction of the perpetrator. The process of hunting Commander Echo did not take long, as many pilots in a nearby area joined the search, but it was a pilot by the name of Commander Tombstone who claimed the kill, and reclaimed the precious recipe for which Commander Krabs made his pledged charitable donation. It is not clear what future Commanders Echo and Catnip now have with the East India Company, or how this incident has affected crab patty production. And now for some news from the Federation frontier world of 78 Ursae Majoris, where elections were held earlier this week between the ruling 78 Ursae Majoris for Equality party and the alliance-aligned Alioth Independence. After several days of campaigning by each democratic faction, the 10 billion inhabitants of the system were asked to choose their new government last Thursday. Galnet News can now announce that the majority of ballots, 84.3%, were cast for the Alioth Independence, with only 7.4% for 78 Ursae Majoris for Equality. Acknowledging the results, 78 Ursae Majoris for Equality peacefully transferred control of Townsend Hub, and therefore the system, to Alioth Independence. This also means that 78 Ursae Majoris will officially begin the process of affiliation to the Alliance of Independent Systems. The system of 78 Ursae Majoris was featured last month on Galnet News when a group of rebels attempted an armed coup against Federation government. While 78 Ursae Majoris for Equality managed to keep control of the system, public confidence in their ability to uphold peace dropped significantly. The Alioth Independents, on the other hand, have objectively been the most influential group in the system for several months now, since they also control the neighbouring system of Alioth, capital of the Alliance, their presidents on the Rominga dock in 78 Ursae Majoris had attracted a large number of independent pilots seeking unique trading opportunities. In order to quell civil unrest and re-establish security in the system, 78 Ursae Majoris for Equality and the Alioth Independents agreed to hold democratic elections so that the civilian population could decide the fate of the system. While some analysts considered it only a formality, this election result establishes the population's desire to break away from the Federation and instead join the Alliance. This high-profile departure from the Federation raises uncomfortable questions about its ability to hold on to frontier worlds in times of crisis. It might also erode Vice President Naylor's power base at a moment when support for President Halsey is at an all-time low. Galnet News could not, however, obtain official statements on the election from either President Halsey or Prime Minister Mahn's offices before the time of broadcast. The system of Sanchilan is independent and home to around 10 million inhabitants, but it was rocked by unrest earlier this week as reports of civil war began to emerge. A report from Commander Vantas seemed to indicate that widespread discontent had permeated staff of the Sanchilan Commodities Corporation, who held control of the system. And word spread quickly among Pilots Federation members that the Social Elu Progressive Party were about to make a move to quash what was described as a greedy and vicious organisation who were abusing labour laws. Little news and no footage has emerged to this point, but as of today, Sanchilan is now in the hands of the Social Elu Progressive Party, who hold a 36% influence in the system, and also control the neighbouring Elu system itself. This development will no doubt please Commander Vantas and those pilots who came to his aid, but the Sanchilan Commodities Corporation, despite being ousted from power in Sanchilan, still have significant influence in the system. Odyssey Expeditions has unveiled their new spokesman for the startup company's ambitious new exploration and terraforming campaign. Ranger M is the pilot who recently returned from a deep space expedition having found, among other things, a region of space Odyssey Expeditions feels is ripe for their new and ambitious colonization program. The commander, wishing to remain anonymous, agreed to act as a spokesman, going by the handle of Ranger M and wearing a mask. CEO and founder Preston Tucker spoke to reporters. The mask was our idea. 
Ranger M suffered a horrible incident many years ago, and his face isn't what you'd exactly call media-friendly anymore. Hell, even progenitor cells haven't been able to help that mess. But we feel that only adds to his mystique. Kids love that sort of thing. We've got big plans for Ranger M as we ramp up our colonisation campaign. You'll be seeing a lot more of him in the future. At his first public press conference, the previously reclusive Ranger M had this to say. What I want to do is show people that anyone can be an explorer. The Federation and Empire make it seem like only the best of the best even stand a chance, but that's not true anymore. What used to take weeks can now be done in hours. They'd also have you believe that only people who break long-distance records can find anything of note, and that's not true either. There is so much to explore right in our own backyards. So you kids growing up, stay in school, take your vitamins, and don't let anyone tell you you can't become an explorer. That's the Galnet News for today. Tune in next time to keep your galaxy in focus.